In tonight's video, I would like to pick up where we kind of left off yesterday. I had mentioned at the very end of yesterday's video that there was evidence for this creature called a Eurypterid. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of these things, and they vary in size. I think the evidence that we're seeing in Antarctica might be fossilized evidence that these things were alive at one time and just got caught up in the cataclysm. The first image that I had showed was this one. Now, I've tried to enhance it a little bit, but it shows basically the center part of the body and these two long kind of lobster-like arms that have claws at the end. Now, there is another side I'm going to show you here in a minute. Um, but real quick, I just wanted to talk about something that kind of goes along with it. In the series, Stargate, and I know it's Hollywood, but sometimes there's little slices of truth found in Hollywood stuff. There was this creature called a, a Goa'uld, and it was a serpent-like creature. It was, oh, a few feet long. It would inhabit your body, wrap itself around your brainstem, and turn you into this incredibly healthy, long-lived, powerful god. That was the, the story. Well... The creature kind of looks like things that actually did live at one time. And we found fossilized evidence for them. Sometimes they're referred to as sea scorpions. Now this is a little bit larger version than what they show in the series. But I think it's something that kind of bears looking into, especially when there's more than one location that we can find them. Now I want to start here at the actual location and show that we have the body here, some type of a tail evidence here, and then these two longer arms. There's also this location, and this is going to be kind of a tougher one to see, but I want you to tell me what you think when you look at this. Now we've got the head, we've got the pincers here, two eyes, we have one arm here with what looks like a claw, we have another arm here, and just like, you know, with lobsters, they have the one big one and they have one smaller one, I think that might be what we're looking at here. Now, I'm not sure what we're looking at back here, but I want to do a quick measure on this just to give you folks an idea of the size. Pull out the ruler here. And let's do this in feet real quick. 44 feet roughly for the body here. You know, and that's, once again, much larger than at least archaeology will admit. But we have to remember something about archaeology and science. You know, they told us that the coelacanth, a fish that has been caught multiple times since uh, the early 1900s, had been extinct for millions of years. And then somebody just fished one up. I mean, this thing wasn't, you know, reported to have died out 10,000 years ago or 20,000 years ago. It was reported to have died out millions of years ago. And not only, they didn't find a, you know, a fossil of one, they found a living one. So... Looking at stuff like this, I know it seems fantastical, but the idea of the car, the combustion engine, as little as 150 years ago, just describing it would have gotten you committed. Rubber tires. Tires that made of things that at the time were used to erase pencil being able to mine steel and aluminum and form it and shape it in such a way to create pistons and rings and valves and cams and put it all together and lubricate it with oils that are pumped out of under the sand in places halfway across the globe and then create build these huge refineries to create things like gasoline and diesel. The original cars were designed to run on corn oil. And 
if you had said, somebody said, well, why wouldn't you just feed the corn to the horse and then hook the horse up to the carriage and pull your carriage along just like we have for the last 1,900 years? Like I said, there have been things that have happened and that are part of history that at one time were just seen as laughable. Even a 1992 Corolla 150 years ago would have been seen as a futuristic piece of um, just unbelievable technology. The idea of windows that are clear but when break are plasticized and uh, don't come flying in. Uh, it just, I mean, think of all of the parts of your average everyday automobile and think of them prior to 1900, all of the things that had to happen, all of the industries that had to be cropped up, hydraulics, pneumatics, everything. But anyway, other things that I wanted to show you that are a lot like this. Now, remember the picture I showed of the, the Goa'uld, this, this serpent, right? What does that look like? I mean, that's a pretty crazy image, given what we've seen make its way into the consciousness through, through the media, through Hollywood, and the description they gave. And then here we are down to the continent of Antarctica, and we've shown serpents literally everywhere, all over the continent. And now we find this one that has that very distinct head with the pincers on it and the body. It's, it's pretty incredible to see this kind of stuff. Very near to it is something that I only could describe as what looked like a three-headed serpent. There's a, a larger body here, and then there's a head that comes off here, another one here, and another one here. This one's a little bit harder to see because of the lighting. But, I mean, to my mind, either they're sculptures to, they're fossils of, but the appearance of is undeniable. And on a completely different, well, let's do one more. So I can I show this clearly. I'm not sure how you account for this shape. Explaining it any other way. Especially when you look at this very, very closely. You know, at first I thought this was the head and it came around and did this number. Actually, this is. Because you can see the eye, the body. And I think it's just a fossil or a remnant. But in the region, there are things that just are un unexplainable. Absolutely unexplainable any other way. And while we're here, I want to show you something real quick. Up here, just above this serpent, up and to the left, there is this, what looks like it's sometime maybe a base of a building, a remnant foundation of a building where you have the four square sides and you have a door and there looks like there might be something inside. Now that by itself is curious enough. But there's another one. I mean, literally not that far away. Once again, we have the walls, four square sides, and an opening, and it really does look like something is inside here. What it is, I have no idea. But I don't think anyone could ever really look at this and look at the things around it there's almost a body and a couple of arms here. There's really, I don't know how anyone can say, yep, just wind, ice, rock, and snow. 
That's all it is. Figments of your imagination. I, it's just, this is, a, I would like to think of myself as someone who has a, you know, a good imagination, but to imagine all of this, especially when you can go to Google Earth Pro for yourself, download the program, and go to these locations that I've provided and look at this stuff for yourself. I mean, I guess you would have to, you really don't have to have much of an imagination to see this stuff. Especially the one here on the left. Now, I want to leave off today with something a little bit different. There's a location that I found that I've labeled Ancient Fortress. Now, this is a whole different part of the investigation. On this mountaintop, right here, if you look very, very closely, right here, there seems to be a building. It's very difficult to perceive from distance. And by itself, by itself, you think, well, that might just be just a strange formation in the rock that looks like that. But there's something else I want to show you. In the shadow, beyond, there's a shadow just above it that's just hovering in midair with no connection below to the side or around it, nothing, just a shadow along this ridge. And you can see, you can see the different things in shadow. Like, for example, you see this rock right here that has kind of this uh, triangular shape? This is the shadow over here. The light is from the back and to our right. So if this is here, this would be over here. But yet we don't see it, do we? We don't see anything that could cast that shadow. Now, Here's kind of, for me, the smoking gun. I want you to look real close over here at this larger shadow. We're going to zoom out. The larger shadow, this is casting right here. If you look down here closely, you can see the shadow of a power line. There is a very large tower and a power line that goes to it. And that shadow would have to be over here near this valley. And if you look close, you can kind of see that tower. I think this is a location where maybe... A modern government has found something on the surface from an ancient civilization and they have gone to the extent of making some type of a power generating facility near it to get power to it. And I have looked and looked and looked and looked and looked online to see if this is something we've constructed or modern man or modern government has constructed. It, there's nothing online about it. Nothing. I think that power generation facility is right here, hidden down in this valley. And the lines come up to this tower because of the remoteness of this. There must be something incredibly important and profound for them to go to this extent. But if someone else can explain this tower and this line, way out here in the middle of nowhere, with some natural formation. I'd love to hear it. There are no power lines in Antarctica. They run the power underground. Just because it makes no sense to build power poles. I don't think they were able to here because of the rock. But at McMurdo, everywhere else, 
they don't string up power lines because of the storms. They just don't have the repair crews. So, anyway, like I said, as in all videos, I will put down in the description these locations. You can look at them for yourself. Um, thank you so much for the support. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time.